I'm so happy to bring on Helen Jane Peters. She is a Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society historian, as well as uh, the membership committee chair. She is making sure that the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society brings in new items and brings in all that rich history of Greater West Bloomfield. She also got the society's highest award. So that is the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society Distinguished Service Award. It is in appreciation for many years of collecting, preserving, and sharing the history of Sylvan Lake. So Helen, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, thank you. This is a real honor to be here with you. Yes. A little bit of history about Sylvan Lake. Yes, of course. So Helen, Jane, let's start off first by telling everyone here a little bit about your role as a historian for the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. Well, I started collecting Sylvan Lake history about 25 years ago uh, when we had our 50th anniversary as a city. And I've been collecting and um, collecting ever since, saving all kinds of things. And it's it's probably somewhat easier for me because I grew up in Sylvan Lake and I know so many people here. So I can connect people with some, possibly somebody that lived in their house or some other situation that they want to know more about. So that's, it's really been a joy for me. And one of those new things that we were talking about a little bit before this is the Daniel Whitfield School, which um, is obviously very historical and one of those important things that we have here in our community. So can you talk a little bit about the Whitfield Cornerstone and those uh, historical facts behind that and what it means to this community here? Oh, I'll be glad to. And uh, I'm actually, um, Maddie, the Daniel Whitfield School, the last one, was raised. It was torn down in 19, in 2003. It was a very, very sad day for all of us who attended Whitfield. And because Whitfield School was like our community center. We did not have a community center. We did not have a gathering place. So the school took that role. It was not only our place of learning, but it was also where we had school, uh, Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. There were also sports. That was a place where families came together and we loved our school. So it was very sad when it was torn down. But so the, t the day that it was torn down, Mr. Chuck Johnson was the contractor to do the demolition. And he took the, the cornerstone away. And I said to him, that really belongs in Sylvan Lake. I had no idea that there was even anything in it. But about four years later in 2007, Anna Lee Kennedy knew a lady, Jean Smith, who knew Mr. Johnson and made arrangements for the three of us to meet with him. And it was a big surprise to all of us, but he gave us the cornerstone and the contents. So I came home with all the items in that cornerstone. And this is one of them. This, there were three books like this one. This one has a record of the students in the school starting in 1851. There was also a Bible in there in the, in the uh, cornerstone. And a newspaper from 1929. Actually, the cornerstone, this is an open, now the open press, but it was then the daily press from 1929. These were all in the cornerstone. And uh, one of the neat things is that it had a list of all the teachers, the students in each grade, and um, mm -hmm. other things like that. <laughs> um, so all what I have done is I have had all these copied. And so there's we are going to put the copies into the cornerstone when we close it up sometime soon and then there will be the originals will be put in this gray box behind me that's an archival box that will be put placed at sylvan lake city hall and there will also be a copy at city hall for people to read it will be copy of the the items were that were in the cornerstone <clears throat> because the day that it was opened a lady was there who was a kindergarten student in 1929, and she could see, find her name on the list. 
which was uh, really exciting, I'm sure, for her. So, but back to the history of this, um, in 1851, um, the, um, a group of people, uh, all the voters in that in the, this area, got together and de and decided, voted on the the to build a school. This was the first school in this area, and it was a fractional school because children came from West Bloomfield, Bloomfield, Pontiac, and um, Waterford. They had to come to this area, so. Um, uh, that's why they called it a fractional school. And it continued to be a fractional school until 1947 when they joined the Pontiac School District. But they decided to build a schoolhouse on a quarter, on a half acre of land that was donated by Daniel Whitfield. That's where they got the name. So, um, let me see, where am I? <laughs> So the, the, they built the school and it was to be 24 feet by 30 feet, painted white on the outside, but painted drab on the inside <laughs> for kids. <laughs> it wasn't very exciting to go into that room. But that, they used that school, that one room school for until 19, 1894. Then they decided to build another school, a new school because it was getting too small and too crowded. So they built the second school that was more like a cottage style school. And it, they eventually had two rooms in that school. And then in 1926, they decided that one was too small and they floated a bond for $75,000 to build the new Whitfield School. Do you want me to stop? <laughs> no, that's perfect. That was amazing. And obviously the history is so important to those people in our community, especially those who have attended at Whitfield School and have uh, their relatives teach there. Can you tell us a little bit about this cornerstone ceremony? I know that you guys don't have a date set yet, but for when you guys are going to be putting the uh, those papers and those items um, back into Sylvan Lake Town Hall. Well, the cornerstone has been placed in our Memorial Park, and I want to give all the credit to Mike Grasser. Mike was the one that went over to Mr. Johnson's business and picked up the cornerstone and brought it to Sylvan Lake. And then he dug a hole three feet deep so we could put cement in there so it would have a solid foundation. And then we used Whitfield bricks to um, build it up so that it's the height of a bench so it, people can actually sit on it. So um, there's a copper box that fits inside and that's where I will put all of these uh, um, items, all these copies. And we're thinking that in someday in the future, somebody's going to say, I wonder if there's anything in that. So we'll see, <coughs> I hope so, um, because they'll be surprised to see what really is inside the box. Yes, and so, obviously it was very great that you guys were gifted these and able to talk um, to the person who gave them to you and look through those. I feel like, you know, you love that type of stuff where you can see um, all those names and the teachers and that newspaper. That newspaper looked amazing. It was so um, pretty well kept for the time that it's been in there. Yes, everything was so well kept. It was a little fuzzy, and I'm not sure what that was from, but anyway, it, everything was in very, very good condition. And they, they also had pictures of the first and second school in there. And of course, the teachers, the list of teachers, I attended Whitfield from kindergarten through uh, sixth grade, and I had all of those teachers. So that was really exciting um, for, my, for me and my classmates. Yes, amazing. So. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Helen Jane, and we'll be sure to keep tabs on that ceremony um, and share it with our viewers when that happens. Great. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for talking with us this morning.